In the last video, we took apart my MacBook Pro, aka the Mini Mac. So, in this episode, we gotta take a look on how to reconnect our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Cause after reconnecting, I found out that we wouldn't have any connection to either Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I just played around with this Mac, tested it out, and it happened to work. So let's get into how to connect our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth after converting our MacBook Pro into a screenless Mac. Let's go. Keep in mind that this is a 2015 MacBook Pro, so some things like the location and number of screws, etc. may vary in other model versions of the MacBook you are working on. Moving on, the first step we're going to be taking is working on to take off the housing of the antennas on the display end. So I did forget to hit record, but essentially you should be sliding that bottom black bracket at the very bottom of the display all the way to the right as much as it allows. And then you're going to lift up from the bottom and try and get it off. Once we have this removed, we are exposed to the antennas, which we will need to take out, obviously. Start by unscrewing the five small Phillips screws around the middle, holding these antennas down. And yet again, ensure that you're storing all the screws and organizing them carefully in the same order that you took them out, because we will need to screw them back in so we have everything proper. There are going to be two smaller black colored Phillips screws here on the very edge that must be removed. They can be on both sides. So you're going to go ahead and unscrew those. The screwdriver I ended up purchasing unfortunately was not magnetic so I would highly recommend getting these magnetic screwdriver sets rather because uh, it really did end up being very helpful and useful as these are really tiny screws that you want to store and keep. Now outside of this bracket, we're going to have the two T8 screws, so they're going to be two black ones on the left side and on the right side. Those ones, you can go ahead and unscrew them. Just for safe measures, you may need to unscrew that to allow some more room to get off that main bracket with the antennas. However, with these screws, they will be blocked by certain wires, which is important to be delicate with, especially on the antenna and Bluetooth cable side, as these will need to be used obviously for the reconnection of the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signals. So on the left side it'll be most likely, at least on this one, uh, this MacBook version, it'll be the display port as you can see, which we won't really need, but on the right side there's the same two screws which will be covered by the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cables. So just push them aside delicately, make sure you don't break or snap any of them and you can go ahead and unscrew them. Here you can see me trying to use a flathead screwdriver to delicately move these wires out of the way which should happen to work and I got back to work. There are also sometimes tape to hold all these wires together which you can unravel and undo in order to freely access and get more space. And the final screws over here will be some silver colored screws which you can also go ahead and take off. We're just going to go and take off any screws that we see along this border so that we can safely remove the antenna. As you can see here, once you take them off, you won't be able to take them with your bare hands just that quickly so you 
also won't be prying it using a flathead screwdriver on the side of the bracket. You're gonna actually be going ahead and looking underneath of the antenna. There will be five brackets at the very bottom. If you take a look and get to eye level with this display, you'll see that there are five brackets that you're gonna have to pry upwards using a flathead screwdriver. So let me show you guys what it will look like. So here you're gonna see the first one at the very left and moving on the double in the middle, the fourth one, and last at the very right, the fifth one. Once you got all those up, you're going to be able to take off the antenna. The last thing that's going to be preventing you is this piece of tape. Yep. It's a piece of tape. So you just can go ahead, unpeel that one, and then you're gonna be able to pull up that whole antenna bracket. And there we go. Now we got the whole antenna piece taken off this display bracket, and we're gonna carefully place it down. So you can see that there's going to be one cable that you can't disconnect at all, which is actually the camera cable running through the screen, obviously up towards your camera. This one we're going to have to cut as you can see, so you can just grab a piece of scissor and just snap that one away. Once you've got that disconnected, you can just go ahead and place all those screws back into those spots so that you don't lose anything and you know where everything's going back. In the future, you can just refer to it again so you know which screws went where and where you can screw them. Now comes the part where you're going to take off the back panel of the MacBook. Because now that we have the antenna, we're going to be able to reroute that and connect it back into its place to get our Wi Fi and Bluetooth connections working again. And once again, this is where I wish I kind of had purchased a magnetic screwdriver so that I didn't have to have to to get it out because having a magnetic screwdriver really makes it Alongside any other project where you're disconnecting the back panel, make sure you're shutting it down before you disconnect the battery. So once we got that battery connector up and away from the connection, you can go ahead and begin working on your MacBook. So you're going to be using the exact same housing as before and put all those wires and fit it through. But there's that one black screw that you'll see, which is a T5, and you're going to be having to remove that and to make more space and get it through neatly. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew that.
I went ahead and used some electrical tape to kind of secure it because having the antenna out like this, it was very flimsy and went around and about. So I just grabbed some black electrical tape to match the color of the housing and went ahead and secured it down. And I would highly recommend doing this because you wouldn't want it to be moving around and potentially to break. Now that we have the electrical tape all down, we're going to grab those three T5 screws and put them back all into place around that bracket you saw earlier. And then the small piece that you unscrewed, you can go ahead and fix that back as well to secure all in place. Now something I would recommend doing after doing this whole entire project is put on the other side bracket, which I will most likely be doing as well, because it just gives a bit more secure security of that whole housing. So here you can see it, you got that one screw in, and then you can just go ahead and put the two other ones. Once you have all the screws in, you're gonna work on rerouting those antenna cables back into their original spots that you took them out of. So you'll just follow the same guided paths and bring them over into where they're gonna be connected again. The camera cable is not that essential so I ended up cutting the wire a bit shorter so that it could properly fit and be neatly because uh, we have already disconnected it so it doesn't really matter. But once we got that we have the Wi-Fi and antenna ones which are the most important ones that we are looking to use. So we put all those three back into place making sure that you are very careful and applying medium pressure, very light pressure to just get it into its spot and get them connected. And once I got all that connected, I just ended up adding a bit more electrical tape to secure it down. Over here, we can just go ahead and connect our battery back into place, making sure everything is all done well, and then put the back panel on and screw the pentalope screws back into place. And now it's about time to test it out. So we're gonna go ahead, plug in our external display Turn on that power button and wait till we hear that chime. Oh, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and let that boot up. Once we're logged in, oh, I see we do have Bluetooth. Okay, we got it. And now we'll try and do a Wi-Fi test, the Wi-Fi speed test. Run that speed test. And we do have Wi-Fi, guys. So what we did did work. Hopefully it is this whole process has worked for you as well. And now we're gonna go ahead and test a magic mouse and see if that's connected. Yep, once we got that connected, it does seem to be working. So that is the end of the video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and the notification bell. See you in the next one, guys.